What's that on my camera? Okay, is that a piece of hair? No, wait, what? Dirty lens. Hi guys! In this video, we are looking at Illusion, which is another one of those tricky literary devices that tend to sneak up on us time and again. It's also one of the more challenging literary devices, so let's go ahead and break it all down in this video. So in a nutshell, Illusion is the brief reference to a specific person, place or idea. Usually this reference is well known, at least among a sizable group of audience. So for example, if I were to say, my brother's hair is doing a Boris Johnson today, then that's me using cultural illusion to make a point about my brother's messy, dishevelled hair. Because of course, we know that Bojo is famous for his unruly mane. I guess I also have an unruly mane. So illusion actually isn't just a literary device. It's also a rhetorical device, and we tend to use illusions in casual daily conversations as well, like the examples I just provided. The reason why illusion is difficult in literary analysis, though, is that the author assumes a common basis of knowledge with the reader, i.e. if a writer alludes to Romeo and Juliet in her work, she's assuming that the reader has read or is at least aware of the Shakespearean play. Now, this is all fine when the elusive reference is widely known, but there are those writers who deliberately use incredibly obscure references, and modernists like James Joyce and Ezra Pound are some extreme examples. So depending on the reader, this could either alienate or strengthen the author-reader relationship. An English professor who's widely read may find it easier to appreciate Joyce's Finnegan's Wake than your average layman reader. Largely because they would get a lot more of the esoteric allusions even though who would enjoy Finnegan's Wake? In general, we can group illusion into several categories, and they are historical, political, geographical, cultural, and literary. Here are some quick examples of each type of illusion. Now, when it comes to literary illusion, we can actually break it down even further into three smaller groups, and they are mythical illusion, biblical illusion, and intertextual illusion. Let's now go through what each type of literary illusion means, and take a look at some of their corresponding examples. illusion refers to ancient gods or goddesses and mythical stories, usually of classical Greek or Roman origins, but they could also be taken from Norse, Middle or Far Eastern legends. An example of this can be found in Hamlet, when Prince Hamlet says, Oh God, a beast that wants discourse of reason would have mourned longer, married with my uncle, my father's brother, but no more like my father than I to Hercules. So here, the prince is expressing his disdain for his mother, but more importantly, for his uncle, King Claudius, who had murdered his father, married his mother Gertrude, and usurped the Danish throne. But Hamlet does this with an ironic illusion, because he emphasizes that his stepfather and uncle is just as unlike his father as he himself is to the Roman warrior Hercules. So the point he's making here is that he wishes he could be as physically and mentally strong as the mythical warrior, but is of course hampered by his hesitation to pursue a more definitive course of action, which he sees in himself as a weakness. Biblical illusion refers to any element mentioned in the Bible. So that could be Christian ideologies, scriptural passages, parables, biblical characters, etc. Now, even something as simple as heaven versus hell could count as a biblical illusion, because these are essentially Christological ideas. In T.S. Eliot's poem, The Love Song of J. Alfred Prufrock, the speaker is a bold old man reflecting on the moments and regrets in his life. He laments the underwhelming mundanity of his existence, and at one point, he imagines himself as an extraordinary biblical character, namely Lazarus of Bethany, 
who came back from the dead with Jesus's miraculous works. And we can see this in the striking juxtaposition between pedestrian domestic items and the incredible biblical tale alluded to halfway through the poem. And would it have been worth it after all? After the cups, the marmalade, the tea, among the porcelain, among some talk of you and me, would it have been worthwhile to have bitten off the matter with a smile? To have squeezed the universe into a ball, to roll it towards some overwhelming question, to say, I am Lazarus, come from the dead. Come back to tell you all. I shall tell you all. If one settling a pillow by her head should say, that is not what I meant at all. That is not it at all. Finally, intertextual allusion basically means references to other literary works, hence the word intertextual, because the authors are cross-referencing other texts in their own writing. For example, the title of Aldox Huxley's novel Brave New World is an allusion to Shakespeare's play The Tempest, when Miranda exclaims out of naivete, Oh wonder, how many goodly creatures are there here? How beauteous mankind is! Oh, brave new world that has such people in it. But Miranda is being naive here because the characters around her are in fact not at all beauteous and nor is the island this brave new world of hope and possibilities. So based on this original reference, Huxley sets up a similarly ironic anticipation for the setting of his dystopian novel, which is gradually revealed to us to be a frightening, twisted world where man behaves more like robots than humans. And there you have it guys, that's illusion for you. I hope this video clarifies what illusion means, why writers use it, and what types and examples of illusion we tend to come across in literature. You can also read my blog post analyzing the different types of illusion in T.S. Eliot's love song poem, which I'll link to in the description box below. And if you found this at all helpful, please do hit the thumbs up button and subscribe to my channel so that I can keep making useful literature study videos to help you get top grades. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye.